another episode of Carolyn Talks Television. I'm here today once again with my wonderful co-host Rachel Arnett mm -hmm. and we're here to talk about holidays. How could we not talk about the wonderful holiday season now? And to start us off, we went out in the field and we're going to share that with you a little bit. And we may even do it in the future on other shows too. What do you think? It was a lot of fun. So it was I'm a doing lot it. of fun. We were able to visit the Pink Party a l few weeks ago and ask some of them about their favorite holiday movies and shows. But we'll just tease that for now and let you hear from them in a little while. For starters, I want to hear a little bit about what our favorites are. Yeah. Because I think everybody's got favorite holiday shows and they're all starting now or have just started. Yeah, it's about that time. <laughs> it really is about that time. Are there any specific tradition films that you see in your household? Well, not me necessarily, and I know he's, he's always been a little upset with me about this, but my dad has to watch A Christmas Story, almost the entire 24-hour marathon that comes on. <laughs> it, is, it is a given. We know that if we can't find our dad, that is where he is. He's somewhere in the basement probably watching it. I well, mean, I hope Peter Billingsley has just heard that. <laughs> Wherever you are. Wherever in, in, you are, Peter. You. Peter Billingsley, <laughs> you have one big fan in Connecticut. Oh, yeah. 24 <laughs> hours, huh? We, he's got a leg lamp, night light. <laughs> at one point, I almost built a leg lamp from a mannequin leg that I found when I was working at the mall. It, it's a thing in our family. We know, like, if we can't figure out a holiday gift, something Christmas story related, he will love it. Oh, It'll my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Well, we have a couple of movies in our household that are big, big favorites. One of them I'm going to try to convince mm -hmm. you to watch. That's a new one later in our segment about Convince Me. Yeah. But another one that we really, really, really love is It's a Wonderful Life. Aww. We're just such marshmallow family <laughs> exactly. in our household. How could you not love that movie? You know, James Stewart, Donna Reed, and Angels and Bells. Oh, my gosh. It, and it's funny because that idea, even people who've never seen the movie have heard that line and know of that idea. And, and know exactly yeah. what I'm referring to. And it, it's one of those moments that tells you if you don't think you're appreciated, mm -hmm. you really are. Mm -hmm. You really are. I think that's one of the things I love about it is that it's just a movie that makes you feel feel good mm -hmm. about who you are, even if you're not feeling that great yeah. about yourself. And that everyone makes a difference. Everyone has an impact in other people's lives. And most of the time, even if you don't realize it, you have a positive impact yep. on other people's lives. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to go back a long, long way <laughs> and go back to my childhood. Fortunately, my childhood, it extends into my kids' childhood, mm -hmm. your childhood, and probably even your little son's childhood, <laughs> who we met last month. <laughs> Zachary, our wonderful uh, resident three-year-old who is about to be four-year-old. Um, some of the wonderful holiday shows that come on every year and have been coming on every year since the 60s. I'm going to start with a personal favorite, mm -hmm. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Oh, I love that movie. How could you not love that show? <laughs> I had such an identity crisis as this like tiny Jewish girl who loved <laughs> all of these stop-motion Christmas movies. I felt so weird that I absolutely loved them and waited for them every year. I remember my parents, especially if that movie fell during Hanukkah, having to say to them, <laughs> Now, I was a little girl, so, you know, bear with me a moment. I'd say, okay, we have to do the presents before the movie so I could play while I watch. Because everything was scheduled oh, yeah. around there. Because, folks, as you know, back in the 60s, we did not have DVR. We did not have VHS. We just watched it and hoped it would be repeated at some point. Because if it wasn't, out of luck, folks. Yeah. Show over. So I would literally schedule the holiday around watching <laughs> Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Now, we have to light the candles. Now, I need my present now, and now I can play with it while I watch. Quick, let's celebrate Hanukkah so I can watch the Christmas, <laughs> Christmas movie. <laughs> and that's what it was. That's awesome. And, of course, I don't know if you re realize, but a very famous Burl Ives no. was the narrator oh. of Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. His voice is just a part of my childhood. 
It is, and it was one of those that many, one of many Rankin Bass productions that we know of. And now, talking about some of our favorites, let's see what some of the favorites were of some people in town when we visited out in Blueback Square. And we were wondering, what are some of the holiday shows that you see on TV? They could have originated in the theaters, but what are some of your favorite holiday shows that you look forward to? Okay, I love to watch the Hallmark Channel. There's tons of holiday shows. I'm a Hallmark lover. I, I could get addicted to it. And I like to watch Hallmark too, but I also like A Christmas Story. That's one of my favorites. I, I think you have a lot of people who go right along with you with that. So do you, do you watch them every day? Because I know Hallmark. Oh yeah. Oh, you can watch them from now, coming Thanksgiving on now. I think it's even before. I think they're starting the end of October this year. So we picked a really warm day to talk holidays, but we wanted to visit with a lot of the people here, and good luck with the program today. Yep, thanks a lot. You have a happy holiday. Thanks, same to you. Thank you, you too. Bye-bye. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed our fun visit with some of our friends in town, yeah. and we will share some more with you in a little while, but now we've got to get back to childhood favorites. And we have some other childhood favorites I know that you also watch. If you'd like to share some of your favorites, I know we've been jotting them down and it became the endless list of Christmas movies. It's not a childhood favorite per se, but I cannot miss Elf anytime it's on. I can't, every scene in that movie, there's something that I watch and I discover something new or I didn't quite get it maybe when I first watched it, but now I do. And Will Ferrell just commits so wholeheartedly to this role. Well, you know, it's, when I first saw it, I thought, I'm going to hate this. Yeah. <laughs> it's really going to be this sort of silly nonsense and, oh, I don't know if I want to watch it. And then I watched it and I saw, I was like, oh, Farrell, you're warming my heart. How did you do that? I didn't he know he speaks, could. He sneaks up on you. It, it, it was he, really surprising. They really did a good job of, I think, building the story in such a way that there were stakes eventually. And you started to really care about this person and his family and wanting yes. him to be And I wanted to save Christmas. <laughs> I wanted Santa Claus to be okay. Now, th at that point, 2003, I was like 18 years old and having an identity crisis. <laughs> there were a lot of identity crises for me as a Jewish person during Christmas. Because I love them. I love the Christmas movies. Well, you know, the nice thing is that the movies are so beautiful mm -hmm. and they really are made to be watched by all. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't feel like there's, well, if you don't celebrate it, you won't enjoy it. Mm -hmm. I think anybody enjoys these. Um, I mean, I still remember going back, things like the classics from Charles Schultz and Charlie Brown Christmas. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody could hear that little symphony playing in their head whenever you hear that, because it's not a, only about Christmas. It's just a really warm holiday special that make people feel good. Mm -hmm. And I think that's part of what makes these holiday movies and TV shows have the longevity that they have. I mean, because we're talking about some things that have been on repeatedly for decades. Absolutely. Decades. And people um, who never get tired of watching them. And as new generations grow up, they watch them and then they keep watching them. Oh, sure. Oh, sure. For example, if I say Miracle on 34th Street, there are very few people I know who would honestly say, they don't know what that is. Yeah, even if they haven't seen it, they know of it. It was started as a movie um, in the movies. It was black and white. Mm -hmm. um, and I still cannot believe the little girl who won everybody's heart was Natalie Wood, which always wow. amazes me. I don't think I realized that. Surprise. That's amazing. Yes, Natalie Wood was, was the little girl. And when you listen to people and you talk about that, you say, well, you know, and then they came out with the newer version and they said, no, 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 no. The original, the original. Miracle on 34th Street with Maureen O'Hara and Edmund Gwynn mm -hmm. and Natalie Wood is the movie that they would want to see. And talk about longevity. That one was done in the 40s in the theater. Mm -hmm. um, people didn't have TVs in their households no. then. That, that was a movie, a successful movie. Um, and then if you flip it around, you have the Santa Claus. 
Oh. Modern day movie that's now on television. <laughs> Another identity crisis for me because <laughs> I had such a crush on Bernard the Head Elf. Who, by the way, is played by another Jewish person, played by a Jewish actor, David Krumholtz, who has made mm -hmm. on Twitter like repeated references to the fact that he's not Bernard the Elf, and I just can't let it go. Like He is Bernard the Elf for me and always will be. But he was such a cute, <laughs> sweet elf. Oh, oh my gosh. The curl. No, it was awful. I loved <laughs> it, it was funny. <laughs> and Tim Allen really got that, that franchise, so yeah. uh, gave that franchise life. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's funny because if you were casting that movie now, I don't know that he's a person that I would think of to play that role. Like, if you described the role, I don't right. know that he's someone that I would that would come to mind, but it so works for him. And now it's identified with him. I mean, I yeah. don't know that I could imagine anybody else in that role. Yeah. And what is it, three iterations of it? Yep. And now I think it's time for us to get into finding out a little bit more about what our town thinks about their favorites because you had some great ideas out there and I have to share them with you. So enjoy a few more favorites from Blueback Square. All right, thank you so much. I'm here with Damaris, who's helping out with the Connecticut Lighting Center at the Pink Party. And Damaris has a particular holiday favorite. Tell me a little bit about that. So one of my favorite movies is called The Grinch because it's a memory as a child and it's just something that I enjoy every time I put it. It takes me back in time when I was a child, and it's just funny. It never gets old to me. <laughs> it happens to be one of my favorite books from a kid. And also, the, Now, do you prefer the old cartoon version, or do you prefer the Jim Carrey version? I like the Jim Carrey version. Why is that one your favorite? I like Jim Carrey overall. He's just funny. He makes it awesome. He gets into the character, and he just makes it real. I just like it. I like Jim Carrey. He's awesome. Absolutely. And is there anyone that you like to watch the special with? Yes, I have my two little ones. So we get together and we watch it every year. And um, we sit around on the fireplace and we have the Christmas tree and we're just counting down the, the moments in where, which where we can open up our gifts and, you know, um, we like to bake cookies. So cookies, my kids love popcorn. So it's just a nice thing overall. So I want to make it a tradition for them too. That's awesome, and maybe the Jim Carrey version will become part of their holiday that's feeling right. and their holiday favorite too. That's right, so hopefully they can once say as well that that's their favorite movie too. <laughs> awesome, thank you so much for speaking with us, Damaris. Thank Have you. a good night. Thank you, you too. Welcome back again, we're here, still talking holiday. Always. Um, and there were some really fun people out there at the, uh, at the ping party, mm -hmm. which if you don't know, is a big celebration once a year to celebrate breast cancer awareness and uh, celebrate life mm -hmm. and keeping people's energy up in a positive way. Mm -hmm. um, when we were there, although we couldn't speak to everybody, it was a very crowded night. Oh, it was incredible. We did meet a lot of wonderful people and several people who were really proud to say that they were survivors, cancer mm -hmm. survivors and also wanted to share with us. So the whole combination made it a very heartwarming evening for us. Oh, absolutely. There was just a really wonderful sense of excitement. And then when we talked about holidays, you would see people light up even more. Because it, it's like you said with the movies before, Right. That even if you're not Christian, there's a sense, sense of Christmas, of just being this hopeful time and a time for yes. family and celebration. And I think that added on to what was already there at the pink party. I think you're absolutely right. I, I, I wouldn't argue with that at all because it just seemed like everybody there was happy mm -hmm. to be there. The vendors were happy. The attendees were happy. The announcers had this energy. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm sure you heard the music in the background. Right. It was just one big, true celebration of life. Mm -hmm. um, and now I'm going to go on yep. and give you a little bit more of a flavor of what's out there. One of the things that a lot of our friends in town loved were Hallmark movies. My mom. <laughs> and, and me. Yeah. And me. Yeah. I, I, and me. Um, I think my DVR is set um, and it's like burning out. I'm, I, I have to watch them <laughs> well, and crank mom, them my out. My mom's like 75% Hallmark movies anyway. It's like 99% <laughs> during the holiday season. I mean, I love the Hallmark movies and I like the Hallmark mysteries, mm -hmm. but the holiday films 
they truly put an energy into them that is incomparable, I think, with other networks that try to produce original programming for the holidays specifically. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I'm talking only about these holiday movies. And I think they have uh, nine or ten new movies coming out. And they started, I believe, the end of October. And yeah. they're running through December. Every week they have a brand new feature movie. Can't wait. Um, <laughs> my personal favorites are always the ones that include a little bit of mystery. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe a mystery in someone's past. Mm -hmm. um, I think probably my favorite holiday Hallmark movie so far, since they're coming out with new yeah. ones, I haven't seen them all yet, is Journey Back to Christmas. Did you ever see that one? Uh, I remember that one. It stars yeah. Candace Cameron Bure, who's in several films yep. through Hallmark. She's doing a lot for them now. Yeah, she does a lot of their mysteries too. Yeah. Um, this movie is about a young nurse at the end of World War II who somehow, through an accident of uh, truly astronomical portion, yeah. uh, proportion, ends up in the present. Mm -hmm. And in some ways, I think of Dorothy, she realizes she really wants to go home. Mm -hmm. Even though she's having a wonderful time where she is in the future and people have been warm and welcoming, she wants to be back where she feels mm -hmm. happy. And it's a lot of the no place like home feel, but she also has a twist in that shortly before her journey to the present happened, she lost her husband mm -hmm. at the end of World War II. So we see how that plays into her personal journey, mm -hmm. as well as this unusual Christmas story with a very mysterious twist. Yep. I remember watching it and really wanting to know how it ended. And I think they build the mystery really well on those. It's not a very obvious answer most of the time. And the way the answers are found are through very creative twists that are not jarring mm -hmm. in that they're not inserted inappropriately. It's not like suddenly a solution. It's not that. No, no, it really, if they make sense and you're like, oh, wow, and it just makes you feel even better. And we're going to take one more visit before we finish up for the day. We're going to take one more visit to our friends in Blueback Square and have one more round of what do you watch on the holidays. Okay, so we have some new friends here who are going to share their thoughts on their favorite holiday movies and TV shows. I have with me Nyla and Sana. Okay ladies, so what are some of your favorites for the holidays? I like The Grinch. Ah, oh, Grinch is getting to be a popular one. Do you like The Grinch with Jim Carrey or The Grinch cartoon? I'm not sure. Do you like them both? Yes. Ah, uh, a woman with good taste. And you? Um, the classic Santa Claus. Oh. The Santa Claus. Oh. Yeah. Anything else? Um, I guess all the characters. I'm a real holiday person, so. So do you spend a lot of time watching all the classics as they're on? <laughs> yeah. Do you watch together? No. <laughs> Who do you like to watch with? My mother. Ah, okay, okay. And who do you watch with? Um, my siblings. I have a nephew and a sister and a mom. So, yeah, we watch together as a family. Well, thank you both so much for sharing your holiday favorites with us. Well, we're back again for just a little bit more time with you before our holiday really gets going. Yeah. And then we can get going and go out to play, do a little more shopping. There's always room for more shopping. <laughs> Maybe I'll buy a video. Uh, just <laughs> yeah, DVD you know. wouldn't hurt. A DVD wouldn't hurt. Um, I don't want to forget Hanukkah movies. We can't. How awful would that be? <laughs> that would be terrible. <laughs> I have to start with something that's always been a fun one for me. Mm -hmm. I, I like a Rugrats Christmas. Hanukkah mm -hmm. Christmas. Look at me. A Rugrats Hanukkah. Christmas. Look what you've done. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> a Rugrats Hanukkah. 
Oh my God, is that too cute? I mean, my kids grew up watching the Rugrats. I grew up having to listen to the Rugrats. But then when they came up with a Rugrats Hanukkah, I laughed so hard. I actually thought they really nailed it. They really did. And it's one of the only visible Jewish families I remember on TV when I was younger, too. Particularly cartoon families, because yeah. there weren't a lot of that. Yeah. Um, and it, it just, it was hilarious. It was fun to watch as a family movie. Mm -hmm. There were definitely some adult theme jokes in there. Yeah, I they, just did, I still I still don't get them. I should probably rewatch it now. <laughs> well, you have a child who is. <gasps> I get to rewatch them all now. Just the right age to check yep. out the Rugrats, and he'll get to see it on one level, and you'll get to see it on your level finally. Speaking of which, Adam Sandler's Eight Crazy Nights, which you know I love. That came out in two thousand two. Now. It looks like it should be a fun animated kind of feature and you get a kick out of it because that's just who Adam Sandler is and he does a lot of fun jokes. Don't kid yourselves folks, this is a grown-ups movie. Yeah, it is not a movie for children. Um, if your children are watching it, I have a feeling they'll have some questions. <laughs> that's a key, I thought. <laughs> because it's definitely Adam Sandler humor. And it's funny because it's almost a Grinch-like character, but he's like the Jewish Hanukkah Grinch in, in just the attitude yeah, at the beginning he, of the film. He's, he's sort of a, a nasty guy, yeah. a nasty guy, but it's a fun, fun holiday movie. And if you want to just sit down and laugh, that's the place to do it. And you mentioned another favorite, mm -hmm. old time favorite, How the Grinch Stole Christmas. And everyone, I think everyone that we talked to when we were out in West Hartford, Absolutely loves the movie. On screen, off screen, on air, off air, someone always brought up The Grinch. Mm -hmm. Oh, I have to watch The Grinch, have to watch The Grinch. And while most people like the live action version mm -hmm. of The Grinch, when it really came down to it, for the most part, people loved the old cartoon. Yeah. That's really what they set themselves back to. It, it's a safe, beautiful story written by Dr. Seuss. And one thing people don't always realize about it, which I think is sort of a fun little tidbit, um, I'm not sure how many of you know who the narrator is who is also the voice of the Grinch, but it's Boris Karloff. Dracula. Yes, Dracula. <laughs> I did not know that. <laughs> Boris Karloff is the Grinch. Wow. And is the narrator of that, and wow, I would have never thought, I, I didn't realize that he was still doing that kind of yeah. Uh, movies at all. I didn't know he was doing movies in the 60s, but he was. And 1966, this movie came out and has become a true classic. Absolutely. A true classic. First of all, because you have Dr. Seuss, which is, I believe every book he wrote became a classic. Yeah. It, in my, that's a my opinion moment. Absolutely. Um, so any of the things that have been brought to screen, I do really enjoy. But this one has a special place in everybody's heart. Well, even just visually, the way that the scenes were kind of sculpted and drawn and then portrayed on screen, you can show someone a picture of the Christmas tree and they'll know it's from How the Grinch Stole Christmas. You can show them Cindy Lou Who's hair and they know it's Cindy Lou Who. And if you ever see a person draw three hearts inside each other, you know where that comes from. Heart grew three sizes it's, that day. That's right. <laughs> and that creepy smile when he starts smiling. That's hey. Horace Karloff. Yep. There you go. Yeah. And now, we only have a couple of more minutes, and we don't want to forget our segment on Convince Me. Yes. So, Convince Me. Rachel has a show I have never seen. If you haven't seen this show, you need to. It is called Community. It is no longer on the air, unfortunately. They did six seasons. And it is one of the best comedic casts I have ever seen put together in one room. You have Gillian Jacobs. Chevy Chase was on the first few seasons. Danny Pudi. Ken Jeong, you have Donald Glover, who's incredible. But there's one Atlanta. episode that you really want oh, to yeah. share with me. So they do a Christmas episode in the first couple of seasons, but they did Abed's Uncontrollable Christmas. And it is a brilliant homage to the stop motion animation where this character wakes up under the delusion that everyone is in this stop motion world. And you go through the journey to find the meaning of Christmas and end up finding out some really kind of heartbreaking things about his life and situation. And it brings a lot of emotional 
aspects to it. Well, I'm going to check that one out, and I want you to check out Scrooge. Not a Christmas Carol. Scrooge. Scrooge. It's actually a musical that was made in England, believe about 1970, and yes, you could see Albert Finney singing and dancing, something most people don't think that they ever should see, but it was worth <laughs> every minute. It was a full-length feature movie. Um, Alec Guinness plays Jacob Marley. Wow. As you can that's imagine. A, that's a great cast, too. Yeah, Albert Finney plays uh, Scrooge. And da now Dame Edith Evans, who I'm not sure, if she, I don't believe she was back then, plays one of the ghosts of Christmas past. Mm. So you must see this movie. It's beautiful. It's well done. And it's got some great special effects. And now we're going to say goodbye to you and wish you a very happy holiday, whatever holiday you celebrate, and even more so, a wonderful 2018.